Thank you, Jen. Uh, just a quick question on um, Ukraine's ask to become a member of the NATO uh, alliance. I and mean, they've, they've put that out for several years. It's been mm -hmm. out there, but really has there hasn't been any decision on that. What is the United States' position on that issue? I mean, does the, does the president generally support the enlargement of NATO, or does he, does he want uh, the alliance to add new members? What is his position? Well, and indeed, the president has spoken to this in the past, and obviously there are requirements that that any country, which the president certainly supports, any country aspiring to join security alliances, NATO and others as well, and he certainly supports the aspiration of Ukraine. There are certain requirements that they would need to meet uh, on a range of issues, including corruption and other topics, and it's obviously up to NATO partner countries and NATO, uh, the alliance, to determine uh, what the path forward looks like. But as the sort of the biggest member of the alliance, the largest member of the alliance, what is the U.S. telling NATO on this issue? specifically, and is the president perhaps offering any assurances to uh, President Zelensky today as he speaks to him on this issue? No, the president's message has been clear. There, are, there are, he certainly supports uh, the aspiration of Ukraine as he supports the aspiration of a range of countries, again, to join security alliances around the world. There are certain requirements that need to be met. Those are well known, and the United States, as a member of NATO, supports that path. Um, okay. Sorry, a quick question on the Senate passage of the Republican bill um, uh, yesterday to overturn uh, President Biden's vaccine mandate for private employers. Um, are you concerned, that given sort of the Democratic support that that um, a bill actually was able to get, are you concerned that it perhaps uh, will actually uh, be able to, you know, interest some centrist House Democrats to maybe join in and, you know, and, and, and secure a vote on that? I understand the White House has said that, you know, you will veto the resolution if it lands on the president's desk. Well, I think what's most important for people to know out there and to understand is the reason why the president proposed uh, these requirements, which include not just a vaccine requirement, but also a testing option, testing once a week, which we feel, and I think the American people feel, is quite reasonable in order to keep workplaces safe, keep schools safe, keep uh, stores safe, where people are out there Christmas shopping and holiday shopping safe. Uh, we also know that it's something, it's steps that economists support, it's steps that 60% of businesses have already put in place. So again, we're hopeful that this doesn't come to the president's desk. Uh, I can't make a prediction of that. I, I'd leave that to the vote counters or the whip counters uh, in, in the House. But if it comes to his desk, he will veto it. Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Um, apart from whatever President Zelensky might have asked the president for today, can you clarify what Ukraine has formally requested of the U.S. as they prepare for any potential invasion? Have they requested support for air and naval defense or electronic warfare, as an example? Well, we're not going to get into specifics of private requests made through diplomatic and defense channels uh, from the Ukrainian government. If they want to speak to that, they certainly can speak to that. Uh, I would note that there were requests, there have been requests made over the course of time, and the United States has provided uh, over the course of some time now, I guess, uh, 400 billion, I believe this is correct, 400 million, sorry, billion would be a lot, uh, $400 million in security assistance that we've committed uh, to Ukraine this year as a part of our efforts to support their sovereignty and territorial integrity. And that includes $60 million of security assistance that we announced during uh, the president's uh, visit in September, which we're still providing, we're still delivering to the Ukrainians. So in terms of their specific requests, what they have, want to convey privately, if they want to convey that publicly, that is certainly their prerogative, but we would not do that on their behalf. And the head of Ukraine's military intelligence service is quoted in the New York Times saying there are not sufficient military resources for repelling a full-scale attack by Russia if it begins without the support of Western forces. Has Ukraine expressed a similar sentiment to the administration, and do you have a response? Again, I'm not going to get into private diplomatic conversations. But I will convey to you, and what, what the president would convey, has conveyed, I'm sure is conveying directly to uh, President Zelensky. Our objective is to uh, make clear uh, the significant and severe economic consequences if Russia were to invade Ukraine, not just from us, but from the global community. Obviously, it's up to President Putin to decide uh, how he's going to respond to that, what steps he may or may not take as it relates to that. But I think what 
the uh, public should see clearly, whether it's the Ukrainian public or the global public, uh, is that the United States is standing up for what we believe are democratic values for the territorial uh, the, the sovereignty of, of Ukraine. And our objective is to prevent that from happening. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.